Welcome to Laughaholics Live. I'm Ray Dijon. This is the best damn comedy show, period, in New York City, Brooklyn to be exact, Laughaholics Comedy Club, where I bring you the best comedians from around the country and around the world. Different styles of comedy coming at you right here, up close and personal, at Laughaholics Comedy Club. You cannot, no bitch, no mother, no n <laughs> Everything else, shit, ass, damn. Penis is all right, not dick. Can't say, can't say like pussy. Huh? No f bombs, no a. No f bombs. No, you can say a, right? Ass, you can say ass. Of course, you can say ass. Sit back, relax, get ready to get your laugh on. It's Laughaholics Live. Let's go. Welcome out, ladies and gentlemen. Give yourselves a round of applause, man. My name is Ray Dijon. This show is called Laughaholics Live. We are the number one comedy club in Brooklyn called Laughaholics Comedy Club. And uh, we've been here 10 years. We celebrated uh, last week 10 years, so clap it up for that. 10 years doing comedy. Across the street from the pink houses without getting shot. That is an accomplishment for 10 years. I tell you that, as always, there's always some celebrities that come to my show, and I want to make sure that I go around and acknowledge my celebrities. Y'all ready for the celebrity check-in? Somebody say, hell yeah. hell yeah. Let me get my music, let me get my music. We go around and do this little celebrity check-in. Oh, yeah. Yep, we in the building, y'all. Now, you guys may know, this is something that has been happening for years. Every time they get to a certain age, they kick them out of the group. Pause it. Please give it up for Menudo right here. Come on. And this is the new member right here. <laughs> How you doing, Poppy? How you doing? Okay, so he's six years old and somebody's going to prison. That's all I'm saying. These are the parents. Let's get them on camera. Special services for children. Put it back on. <laughs> yeah. You know we got to look at our old school beats, you know, our producers and, and singers from back in the days. Hold that up right now. Y'all give it up for Teddy Riley. And Aaron Hall, yeah! Give me some music. Take that, take that. Yep. Okay, uh, we, yeah, we in the building, that's what I'm talking about. How you doing, baby? All right, hold on a second. There would not be a B.I.G. without a Faith Evans, y'all. Give it up for Faith Evans! Put it back on, put it back on. Let me see who else we got. Yep, you, you gotta have somebody old school in the building. Old as shit, I'm talking about, was a waiter at the Last Supper. He also has one of the most infamous songs out ever. Y'all give it up for Lou Rawls. Y'all clap it up for Lou Rawls. Now here's the remix. You'll never find another hairline like mine. <laughs> Cause I've been searching and searching. <laughs> Hold it up. That's my man right there. Give it up for Lou Rose, man. Stop playing. Yeah. Wow. We got two lesbians with glasses. They must be on a blind date. Y'all clap it up for them. <laughs> oh, man. And we have the infamous... Big titty table right here. Y'all give it up for the big titty table. This titties on the table. We got appetizers for the titties. Main course. For, you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. We got one more. I didn't want to forget this guy. I'm trying to remember his name, but y'all will help me out. Y'all, anybody watch the Kardashians? You remember the dude? You know, nigga like hoes. He like being in the whole house. My man right here, Lamar Odom. <laughs> That's my man Lamar Odom. He got, he got the thing on and all that. Yo. Look, look at, she over there like, hell yeah, hell yeah. You damn right. I hope this wig don't come off. <laughs> and speaking about wigs, I ain't got no problem with that, ladies. If you want to wear a wig, wear the wig. All I'm saying is if you're going to wear the wig, make sure you put it on right. 
I'm in DR at the, at the event, you know, I'm two-stepping, that's what I do, I don't be doing all that. I'm just two-stepping, doing my thing, but before I let go, the girl's dancing with me. Nice wig, wig is right here, right? Second song is over here. Third song is in the back. I turn around, you know, just bust my little two-step, come back, the wig done fell off. She's drunk as hell, she don't know it fell off. I'm like, ah, oh, your Rihanna wig is on the floor. You may want to pick that up. So what's the moral of the story? Just glue it on or whatever. How does it go? Get it on right. What the hell? Glue it? How, how do you put it on? Bobby pin, bobby pin? God damn. You know, I remember back in the days, I would see the styrofoam head. Only grandma had that. Now you got 17-year-olds that got wigs. It's an indication of laziness. That's what it is. And then I just found out what this means. I was wondering, what's this? And I thought that the only reason why they did that is because it itches. That is part of it. You usually scratch an itch. That's what I do when it's itching. But you can't scratch it because it'll loosen the thread. All right, y'all ready to have a good time? Somebody say, hell yeah. Once again, welcome out to Laughaholics Live. We're gonna start this show off but our representing lady. Please put your hands together. Funny as hell. Y'all give it up for Ayana Dookie, y'all. Give it up. Pipe it up. Pipe it up. Excellent. I didn't realize the camera was in my face. I'm so hungry. I probably have crumbs on my mouth. I like to complain a lot. It's about it. I complain on stage. It's a lot of complaining. Pipe it up. 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 Just to pipe it up. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. That song just, oh, my bra is not good enough for that kind of music. That song put me out of breath. I was like, ooh, ah, okay, I'm trying to catch the beat. How are we? Are we good? Are we good? Ray was uh, educating all of us on wigs. I had no idea. This was an educational opportunity. Uh, he told us before the show started that we're not allowed to say bitch, but he said titty, so I was like, fuck it. Um, <laughs> I might get cut out of the show. <laughs> but that's okay, y'all have a good time. I used to be a hoe. Um, anybody else? I just wanna make sure I'm in good company, you know what I mean? I didn't realize I was a hoe. Um, I actually acknowledged I was a hoe back in 2008 during Brock's inaugura inauguration. I was in D.C. at that time, that's where I lived. And uh, it was a good time because all the black celebrities were in town for the inauguration, and that's what I'm into. <laughs> so me and my girl, we, um, you know, we dressed uh, trying to trap a motherfucker because that's what you do as a hoe. We got our uniform on, and uh, we're out and about, you know, hoeing. And... Uh, <laughs> And I see this guy coming towards us. And I was like, oh shit, that dude looks familiar. And I looked at him again, I was like, oh shit. I think I fucked that dude. <laughs> but I can't remember his name. <laughs> so I'm staring at him and he's staring at me and I'm staring back at him and we're getting closer and I'm like, I need to remember this guy's name. And then we get really close and we pass each other. And I'm like, whew. And as we get out of earshot, my girl Tara grabs my arm and goes, oh my God, do you know who that was? That was Dr. Ian from VH1 Celebrity Fit Club. <laughs> and I said, oh my God, I thought I fucked him. <laughs> and she was like, oh. Why would you think that? <laughs> and I was like, well, he looked familiar. <laughs> Which is the hoest thing you could say at that moment. <laughs> that's when I realized I out hoed Tara. Um, cause that's what happens when you're a hoe, you hang out with other hoes, right? So you don't realize you're a hoe cause y'all are doing hoe like things together until someone out hoes you and you're like, 
One of my girls, she she out hold me one night. She called me and she was frantic. She was like, Ayana, uh, you're pretty smart. I have a quick question for you. What is the plural of penis? Is it peni or penises? I was like, you're a hoe. Because you should never have more than one penis in a sentence. Like, how do you even use that in a sentence? Like, I had two peni in my mouth. Like, there's no, there's no use to pluralize penis. There's no, no longer a hoe. Um, I think they call it reformed. Uh, found Jesus, whatever you want to call it. Actually, I just got tired of shaving. Um, that's really what happened. I was just like, look, just tired. So, settle on one person. Uh, my boyfriend moved in with me. Um, I stay because I love him. The real reason is rent. Uh, <laughs> but he was it's high as shit in Brooklyn. So I was like, we are gonna make this work. But uh, I, it's the first time I've ever lived with a man before because my parents are divorced. And uh, that wasn't the funny part, but things. <laughs> it's like, damn, that was mean. All right, you ain't got no daddy. Ah, like, oh, all right. I guess that whole joke gave it away up top. Um, but yeah, I, I've never lived with a man before. And when he moved in, I had no idea that when a man moves into your space, everything in your space starts to smell like balls. Like no one, no one told me that. Not like smell, like, like his balls, like I know like, like, you know, balls have a specific smell. Like, I know, I was like, these are his. Like, they're not like miscellaneous sea train balls or anything. Like, and I know they're his balls. Um, those balls, none. I went, I went to wipe my face on what I felt was my towel. Yeah. And I smelled his balls. So I sent him a text. And I was like, hey, you do know the white towel is my towel. He wrote back, yeah. And I was like, then why does the white towel smell like your balls? No response. Um, but yeah, I, I, my, he's not, he's not like, I guess he's like most men. He's not good at complimenting um, me. And I told, I was just like, can you occasionally say something nice? And he was like, bitch, I'm with you. And I was like, good point. Uh, <laughs> It's the ultimate compliment. <laughs> we are together. Um, but uh, yeah, he's not, I, I told him, I was like, you need to get better at this complimented thing. So uh, bless his heart, he tried. So the other day he comes over to me and he's like, hey, you know what I think the sexiest thing about you is? And I was like, uh-uh. <laughs> what? He's like, your ambition. I was like, oh. So you think I'm fat? That's, is that what you're trying to say? Because cause there's no way you can look me in my face after seeing me naked every day and tell me the sexiest thing about me is some shit you read on a motivational poster. Like, there's no... Well, you can do that. So I told him, I was like, hey, in the event, me and you don't work out and you need to go back out into the real world and tell another woman something sexy about her. This is not the time to get creative, okay? Just go out on the corner and when you see a bunch of dudes hollering at a young lady walking by, just listen to what they're saying, okay? You have to do, take notes, record it, videotape. Whatever you got, because here's the thing, I've never been walking down the street and see a bunch of dudes, see an attractive woman and go, hey, you see Shawty's ambition? Damn, Ma, look at you with your fat ass. It's never happened before.
Ah, I'm so happy we had a four-day weekend. Anybody else excited about that? Just, I needed that. I, during the day, I'm an engineer because I'm half Indian. It's one of the things we're qualified to do. And uh, it's, it's, I, I, don't, I don't mind what I do. I just don't like the people I do it with my coworkers, like, I want to shake the shit out of them on a daily basis, like anybody else just, my coworkers, they ask me to do things that aren't in my job description. Yeah, like look at their vacation pictures. Has anybody ever asked you to look at their vacation? This woman came to work, y'all, with 400 pictures, exactly, from a four-day trip, and wanted me to look at all 400 pictures. Exactly. <laughs> From a four day trip, and y'all are not gonna guess where she went and took 400 pictures in four days. A hot air balloon festival. Why do you have any pictures? from a hot air balloon festival, because all the pictures look the same. Why do I know this? Because I sat there and looked at 400 pictures from a hot air balloon festival, just, this is me in front of the balloon. This is my boyfriend in front of the balloon. This is me and my boyfriend in front of the balloon. This is them blowing the balloon up. This is the balloon fully blown up. This balloon looks like a heart. This balloon looks like a star. This balloon looks like a four-leaf clover. This balloon looks like Charlie Brown. Bitch, is there a picture of you falling out the balloon, killing yourself? Like where? Where is that picture? I have another coworker who just uh, who just had a baby. I know because she keeps on sending me pictures of this baby. And finally, I had to tell her, uh, "Look, lady, I take a pill every day, so I don't have one of those." Sometimes I take the pill with liquor so I can kill the baby the same way I made it. Just me? Oh, was that too touchy? Really? Out of all the shit I've said tonight, that is what took y'all over the edge? Okay. Um, not the children? Okay. I, I, don't, I don't like my job. The only thing I enjoy doing at my job, like the only thing, is taking a shit, that's it. That is the only thing I enjoy. I like, I will save it up in the morning. I will chance traffic just so I can shit at work, okay? Cause there's something cool about knowing you're getting paid to shit. It's like, you were sitting there like, they are paying me to do this shit right now. Like the other day I took a shit that was so serious, I wanted to change my shoes so no one would recognize me. Some of y'all like, you nasty. Um, I can't be the only one that waits till I get to work just so I can play a game of Soda Crush. Did you say I am? Yes, I'm that person. I don't accept calls in there though. Everybody has that person. Last thing I say, my boss, my boss is younger than me. Um, I don't know if any of you guys ever work for somebody younger than you. Uh, makes you question every decision you've ever made in life. And uh, every month he schedules a meeting with me, he calls it a one-on-one. -on -one. And anybody have these at their job? And at this one-on-one, -on -one, he, he creates an agenda for this conversation, okay? Because that's what it is. If it's just me and you talking, it's a conversation. On this agenda, he writes opportunities for improvement, which I refer, shit, I messed up this month to his face, right? Because that's pretty much what it is. And he sits there in this meeting and he talks at me. Like he never talks to me, he talks at me. And we all know the difference between someone talking at you versus someone talking to you. When someone is talking at you, all you need to do is nod your head and raise your eyebrows. And you look like you give a shit, right? <laughs> so he's sitting there talking at me and I'm nodding and I'm raising. And he's talking and I'm nodding and I'm raising. And he's talking and I'm nodding and I'm raising. And I started thinking, I wonder what would happen if I just punched this dude in the mouth really quickly and acted like nothing happened. Just went back to nod and raisin. Just punched him in the mouth and when he went, ow, why'd you punch me in the mouth? I go, I didn't punch you in the mouth. Like, you punched me in the mouth like I didn't punch you in the mouth. You punched me in the mouth, then you shouldn't have grabbed my titty. I didn't grab your titty, then I didn't punch you in the mouth. <laughs> you guys have been fun. My name is Ayanna Duke. Enjoy the rest of the show, guys. Ayanna Duke takes shits at her job. Yeah.
That's why they love Name is appropriate. That's real than the chick that they talk about. Damn, is the worst of them out their mouth. She looks good always without a doubt. Two more, one more. One, this guy coming to the stage right now is another young comic. You're gonna love him to death, and then we're gonna close it out with JP. You do not want to miss JP, the most experienced comic on the show. Please put your hands together for the next comedian coming to the stage. Give it up for Jotty, y'all. Give it up for Jotty. Hey, got jewels. I just be giving you. Just trying to open up your consciousness. That's it. Anything that was tough, I just try to break you away from it. You're like, yeah, this. This young brother handsome and deep. I gotta add the handsome to the shit so they can know. You gotta do that. <laughs> just like we're just Jotty. Keep it sturdy. That's the Millie. You cut it off. You can cut it off. You can cut it off. You can cut it off. You can, oh, y'all know how to do that. Y'all know what this is? This, oh, y'all don't know about. You gotta keep your. You gotta keep it. You gotta keep it sturdy. Yeah, I know that. I keep it sturdy. I like it. What's going on, brother? I like this. I feel like we got our shit together. Man. This is what I'm talking about. Getting our shit together. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Like, I just want a predicament where, like, I don't really need nobody help. You feel what I'm trying to say? Like, y'all, like, I got y'all shit together. So I'm like, you feel me? Like, yeah, we here, baby. I'm like, ah, this is here. You feel me? I'm like, ah, I see you. That's what I'm saying. I just want to be like, I don't want to ask nobody for help. That's like a good, good spot right there, right? Like, you know who don't got their shit together? People who smoke cigarettes. They don't got their shit together. Look, because people who smoke cigarettes, they always ask somebody for a lighter. <laughs> by any chance. Why is it by any, by any chance? You think you got to? By any chance, you think you got it. By any chance, you think you got it. It's like, like I know you do this every single day. Same routine. Like you don't got your shit together. Right. So I'm on the corner. I see some cigarette dude ask somebody, by any chance, you got a lighter? Then some homeless dude walks by. Like, by any chance, you got a lighter? Then the homeless dude started checking his pockets. <laughs> As if he really had pockets. I'm like... You ain't got nothing valuable. What you checking your pockets for? And the homeless dude's like, nah, I'm sorry about that. But by any chance, you got some change? I'm like, damn. Now I'm on the corner, I'm looking at both, and I'm like, damn, none of y'all got y'all shit together. Cigarette dude need a lighter, bum need change. Mind you, I had a lighter and change. I could have changed both day lives, but I'm like, nah. I ain't got my shit together to be giving you something. I'm like, nah, somebody gotta be on top of this equation. And that's what I'm saying, nah, I mean, y'all could be good. Let's say I like this, this is, this is cool. I challenge anything too, like anything that was taught to us, I challenge it. Like, you would think sex is like the best feeling in the world, right? Well, people think that, like that's, ah, sex is being, ah. Mm -mm. The best feeling in the world, mm -mm. there's some feelings in the world that make you feel good. Like find a parking spot after 10 to 20 minutes of looking. <sighs> Shit. That feel good. Woo! Because you be driving. Oh, that fire hygiene, like, ah, oh, shit. Ah, no standing. Ah, oh, shit. Shit too small. Ah, oh, shit. Then once you find a parking spot, you like, ah, oh, shit. You like, thank you, God, oh. Then three minutes later, somebody come up to your window, you coming out? You like, nah. I ain't got my shit together to be coming out. Nah, you, you go over there with all of that. I'm, I got my shit together, I'm good. That's it, just, just regular. Like even relationships, like I, I think that could be a beautiful thing. If, depending on like the vibe, it could be beautiful, the connection. Only thing is, when it hurts, that's mm, that 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 mm, 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 that's like the the disappointment part. Cause like you build so much love and trust and everything like that, right? But I don't think it hurt more like losing like your iPhone headphones or something like that. Like that. Oh shit! When you lose your headphones, that that hurt. Cause if you break up with somebody, there's a chance you could get them back. You could text Daquan, sorry, I miss you. I care about you. 
There's a chance, my brother. You could get Ashley back. <laughs> Whatever your name is, you could get her back, but your headphones. You ain't getting that back, brother. The funny thing is, you lose your headphones, you get paranoid. You start looking at other people's headphones, you like, hold oh on. I'm out, everybody time out. I shh. Are those my goddamn headphones? Then why would you lose something you always got a scratch? Like, nah, because mine had the scratch on it. It's always got a scratch. Everybody always got a scratch when they find something. Nah, this is mine. Just relationships, just be honest. Right? Like my cousin, good guy. Only thing is, he a liar. Right? And I'm not be mad that he a liar. It's like, say if you don't think you believe him or not, it's like he blows kisses to the sky, then he words his mother. That's if you think you believe me or not, right? So we live together. And I see my sock jaw open, so I go to him. I said, Chris, did you go on my sock jaw? He's like, no. I'm like, Chris, you could be honest with me. Did you go in my sock jaw? Now he like, that's what my mother ain't going in your sock jaw. Like, the... First of all, just because you do that, that made me believe you. Right? Like, I used to talk to some girl at my job. And she hit me with like a weird question when I first started dating. She's like, Jody, do you talk to anybody else at the job? Now I'm like, ah. <laughs> you know that. She question like that, you're like, ah. Yeah. I'm like, no. <laughs> then she's like, Jody, you could be honest with me. Do you talk to anybody else at the job? Now I'm like, that's where my mother I'm talking to me after the job. <laughs> I ain't got a lot of fun. I got a lot of fun. Let's be honest. Right? Like, even, even like, I think, like, life wise, I just want to be like, I, I think that's like a good, like, not too rich, not too, just, just I. Even talking to females, like, I don't even need, like, a beautiful female. Big, I don't, ah, have it, have it. I don't want it. I don't want that. Mm -mm. Take it. I need me something like, like, all right. I, I, I just want a girl, like, say, if I show you her Facebook or Instagram, you like, she look all right. <laughs> Let me see how this, this hot. Look all right. Like, yeah, you do all right. All right. Crazy thing is, sometimes it don't matter about, like, how a female look. Depends on the inside, right? Like, you may look good outside, but we don't really know who you are. In the inside, right? Like I was talking to some girl named Marilyn. Face wise, she wasn't really all that. Like I probably text her on a Tuesday, not on a Friday or Saturday, because that's that's a good day for brothers right there. I know that Friday, Saturday, that's like that's championship day right there. But recently she got to a car accident, she injured her neck and arm and everything like that. But uh she ended up with a seven hundred thousand dollar loss, so I'm like, she alright. <laughs> oh my god, no, sorry. Text the call them, like, you all right, boo? I just want to make sure you all right. Just that. Then, when you're in relationships, you start knowing about yourself. Right? Like, I'm romantic by mistake. Right, this wild with me right there. I'm romantic by mistake. Like, I love candles. Like, that's my, right in my room is set up and everything like that, right? Then females come in, like, mm. And when black females compliment you, they say, check you out. Check you out with your candles. Yay! <laughs> Check you out. Okay. And then when God's blessed, we don't even really be saying that. Like, yeah, you know, I try to do what I could do when I could do, baby. I mean, you see the candles and all that. That's how God's blessed. Ah, I tried to take it to the laugh of Hornets and all that. But that's how we bless. Well, you like that? Check you. For some reason, they grabbed air with this. I don't know what this is, but hmm. okay, Errol, Errol. I guess that's a yes, Errol. Errol, right? Like it's just, it's just different. Even, even how you perceive things as well. Right? Like I love M and M's. Like that's my, that's my joint right there. Right? But my best friend, he don't like M and M's. He like a deep spiritual intellectual brother. He a poet. He deep. He hit you with something that causes you to really think about, like life, right? No, it's your show. We trying to. What you ain't seeing life? We trying to. We trying to. 
what you said she in life. What you ain't see in life? <laughs> Oh. Well, right. Well, thank you for telling me. <laughs> Usually, I get I talk about this after the show, like yo, you know, I got five brothers, but now nah, I see your brothers, like yo, shout me out. Why you want to show and all that? <sighs> I like that. I was, you know, black people they try to get in on the shine. Yo, I just got five brothers. This camera thing, yeah, I got five brothers. I just want to let y'all know. Now, go ahead, do your stand-up. I just want to let y'all know. World, Brick TV, I got five brothers. Well, I appreciate your brothers. I would ask for their name, but they probably going to be watching this. I know. I don't want to know them. I, nigga, they ain't, I see they ain't the comedy. They don't like laughing. I keep going. Don't, don't come to home laughing. Nah, you know I don't like that, that giggling shit. Nah. Come in here, you angry, you mad. And let them know you got five brothers. And that's my time. Yeah, my name is Jolly Robson. I appreciate you. I'm the king of the trap. Hey, yo, I'm the king. Come on, let's give the young comic a round of applause. Jolly. Hey, yeah. Why are you playing all that? Hold on. Why are you playing all that music tonight, bro? All that trap music. I asked him to play one song. Now he's just playing all that. Right? I'm grown. You could have played that for him, but me, I'm grown. Give it up for the DJ kid for free. Come on. <laughs> How you doing, bro, man? What's your name, man? Ash. Who? Ash. Ash. <laughs> what do you do for a living? Supervisor maintenance. Supervisor. Mad niggas selling weed for him. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I know. I'm just kidding with you, man. Give it up for my man right here. Been sitting in the front. Having a good time. She went to the bathroom three times. We've been clocking you. Man. I want to thank you guys for being a part of Laughaholics Live. My next comedian coming to the stage um, is incredible. He's been doing comedy for over 20 years. He's been traveling around the world. BET Comic View, Deaf Comedy Jam. You name it, Bad Boys of Comedy. He has done it. He's also a writer and a producer. Please give it up for the very talented Mr. J.P. Justice. Give it up, y'all. J.P. Yo, it's your boy, J.P. I just want my little five, ten minutes. Let me go up there and do what I do. I need this tape. Listen, I, I'm, I'm ready to work, yo. Put me to work. JP! Yeah, all right. You can stop whenever you want. <laughs> Give it up for all those comics I've seen on stage. Give it up for all them comics. Ah, oh, damn, they need to put this AC up a little bit more. It's moist as shit in this room, right? I feel like we in a slice of cake or something like that. <laughs> and Roots is playing this week. It shouldn't be this warm in here. You crazy as all hell. Uh, I want, it's a lot of things I want to talk about. It's a lot of things I want to talk about. Let's, let's get this out the way. Uh, so barbecue season just officially opened. Right? Clap who barbecued this weekend. You made my barbecue? Yeah. Uh, I'm not doing no more black barbecues. I'm done. My first one, last one this year. Let me tell you why. I know a lot of y'all probably going, it just started, bro. What's wrong with you? Uh, you ever go to a black barbecue and realize you don't get no name brand soda? You don't get no, no, you don't get no Pepsi, no Sprite, no Sunkiss. You don't get nothing good. You get all the supermarket. Pathmark, CNC, Top Pop, Wallbound, ShopRite. You get all the flavors nobody drink. Black cherry, pineapple, champagne, cola. Bottle be this big. They be like, hold your cup still. <laughs> they tell you, don't drink it all. We be like, we can't. This is 97 gallons of diet pineapple Shasta. <laughs> they want to tell you how much they paid. I only paid 79 cents. I see the sticker. <laughs> top be this big. You ever see how big the top be? You got to open it like this. <laughs> it hits for four minutes. <laughs> By the 
time to finish this and all the flavor's gone. Now you stuck with a brown bottle of soda. Ain't this something? Started out root beer. Now it's just brown. Let me tell you something else about the barbecue too. Uh, black folk, we, we know who make what good. We, we know who make what good. We call people with, them special, with those special meals. We call them. If there's ever a Spanish person at a black barbecue, what's the only thing we want them to bring? Rice and beans. That's it. That's it. You ever get that Spanish guy? Want me to make the chicken? No, 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 no. Don't make no chicken, Papa. No chicken. Whoa, we don't want all that adobo. Just make the rice and beans, bro. And we so, we so ignorant, we don't, even, we don't even introduce them when they come. We be like, yo, the rice and beans is here. And you take it from Papa, go sit over there with the, uh, with the brown soda, Papa. Let me tell you one thing you don't do. If you don't get a potato salad call, don't you bring your potato salad to no black barbecue. Black people, we foul, boy. Ooh, we talk about you right in front of your face. Oh, don't act like we ain't been there. How many of y'all been here? Uh, you, you go in and you got a plate full of food. You go to the aluminum foil and you, you pull that aluminum foil up and you look. And what's the first question we ask? Who made the potato salad? As soon as they tell you, Clara, Clara? Nah, I don't mess with Clara potato salad. And you don't even have a real reason. Why not? Clara's son went to juvenile detention. What does that have to do with the potato salad? White people, I, I, I don't even invite them. They don't. White people, the only thing they ever bring to the potato salad is deviled eggs. Relax, goddammit. You get four white people, you got 8,000 deviled eggs right there. Hi, I'm John. I brought the deviled eggs. Put it over there with the other deviled eggs. Do y'all make anything else? We've got jello. Oh, God. <laughs> my, my family functions be great. Uh, my grandmother, I love my grandmother. Every year we look forward to her. We, yeah, anybody got them elders in their family that when they come, everybody go, that's a tickle grandma, tickle. Take, your, take grandma forever to get from the car to the... You be saying, here go grandma for 15 minutes. Here come grandma, here come grandma, here come grandma. By the time grandma sit down, you be like, all right, I'm, I'm ready to leave. See you next year. <laughs> How long it take grandma to get down? She grandma. And my grandmother do this all day. That's what my grandmother do like that. She ain't even gotta be walking. She just do this all day. Just. She do this so much, her wig don't even be, like her wig don't even sit still. Her wig just be shaking on her head like that. <laughs> and my grandmother, my grandmother say the foulest things. Ooh, grandma's, they, ooh, my grandmother say the foulest things. She don't care. She old, she about 9,000 years old. She don't care. And my grandmother drink Bacardi Dark. If you know anything about liquor, Bacardi Dark is the truth. Whatever you drinking, drink some Bacardi dog. That's the express to, to, to messed up. You, woo, you drink Bacardi dog. <laughs> My grandmother drink Bacardi dog and in the middle of the uh, family function, she just stood up and said, Clara, you need to tell Charles the truth. Victor ain't his son. And I was like, whoa, Victor, 42 years old. You just telling us this now? You know, the, you know the only person that can shut my grandmother up? My grandfather. You ever, been, you, ever, you ever seen them old couples? Them old couples know how to shut it down. Like my grandfather just, shut up, oh God damn it, be quiet. My, grand, my grandma, you can't, you ain't talking to me like that. <laughs> my grandfather's the funniest in the world, boy. I, my grandfather balls as long, you can tell because he go down the stairs sideways. You ever see these old guys, hey, Charlie. <laughs> hey, Charlie, I'm coming down, hold on. <laughs> He gotta let people know he coming because he don't want to fall. Hey, Charlie, look at this. Hold on now. <laughs> you want to laugh? Let me see your phone, Mama. Pass me your phone real quick. Pass me your phone. You want to laugh? Here go. You, you ever see your grandfather? You ever see your grandfather with a cell phone? Oh, this is hilarious. My grandfather don't believe it worked. He used each part individually. Yeah. 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 I'm on the cell phone. I'm on the cell phone. The cell, you say the whole word, the cellular phone. And then go, is this damn thing working? Hey, Charlie, tell me if this damn thing working. <laughs> you ever see your grandfather try to dial a phone? Or they all got the same vision. Your grandfather do this. How many of y'all grandfather go like this? Then they always, they always say, this. do me a favor, dial this number for me, please. You're like, granddad, all you gotta do is press sin. And my granddad, I, I don't have sin. I have S-N-D. 
That's sin. Well, put an E on the phone. I know it's an iPhone, but you need E to spell sin. I said, this joke could go a little bit further. I said, back to her. I said, this joke could go a little bit further. I said, I'm going to buy my grandparents a digital answering machine. Oh, they didn't know how to program it. You call a house, it was any old message. Here go granddad right here. Hey, Charlie, I'm going to the bathroom. I bought my grandparents a digital answering machine. They didn't know how to program it. You call a house, it was any message. Just I don't even know why he bought this goddamn thing. Oh, his goddamn wife and kids is something else. I don't even know. That soda was cheap as hell. I, got, I, don't, I don't give a damn fucking. I said, Granddad, I'm coming over to fix this answering machine. You are disrespectful. Listen, people, I know we don't get to see our family but once a year, but we got, a, we got Facebook now, man. You, you should let us know. Ladies, stop hiding your pregnancy and wait until the family reunion just pop this new kid on us. We don't even like the kids that's already here. Now you brought this new kid. My cousin gonna tell me, this is your, this your cousin, this little Franklin. I'm like, Franklin? Who's his father? That's the first thing we ask, who's his father? Because ladies, watch this, guys don't, fellas, tell me if I'm lying, guys don't think everything is cute. Y'all ladies think everything is cute. When a new baby come around, all the girls go, oh! And they call us, hey, look at the, look at the baby. Look, oh. We don't give a damn about this little baby. My cousin came out this weekend. Uh, when you gay, don't, you gotta pick the right time to come out. You don't, you don't come out when people are supposed to be festive. Right at the middle of the barbecue, he gonna do this. I think it's about to about to tell everybody. I was like, what? He said, I think it's about to tell about to tell everybody. I said, tell everybody what? I think it's about time everybody know that this is what I'm supposed to be. This is what I'm supposed to be. Because that's all you hear. Stop, 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 stop. And I had to stop him. I said, hey, 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 hey. I said, let me get this straight. You thought that we thought that you wasn't gay? We knew that. Don't nobody talk with all them S's. What's wrong with you? Don't get you a hot dog. And don't suck it, neither. Eat it. My cousin's marrying a Chinese dude. This is crazy. It's crazy. We don't know his name. We call him Lee. <laughs> he answers, so that must be his name, right? But we, but we do know his real name. His real name is Hyang Ming Lao. Just like that. Hyang Ming Lao. And Hyang is spelled with an X. Right. right. And who, who thought to pronounce X? Hyang. <laughs> X ain't no Hyang. X is X. X-ray. Anybody went to the doctor and said, let me get a Hyong ray. <laughs> Black folk, Malcolm X. Ain't no Malcolm Hyong. Uh, graduating season's coming up. My baby girl's graduating elementary school, going to junior high school. Um, she's in a, she, she just got the letter. She's going next year in the intermediate school. She'll be in advanced band. Yeah. Thank you for clapping. Thank you. You should be clapping. You should be clapping. Because if she's going to advanced band, that means I survived elementary school band. Has anyone ever gone to an elementary school recital? Why do they call this a band? I don't know. This, this is just noise. Oh yes. And the conductor act like he doing something. He over there like this. And I'm looking at him like, are you on cocaine, sir? Because I don't, I don't hear nothing. And my daughter, plays the trombone. Yeah, you ever heard the trombone from an elementary school kid? Sound like your cat is in heat. All you hear is And my daughter said, Daddy, listen to me rehearse. I had to lie to my daughter. I said, oh, the cops just paged me. Um, they want me to go out and help solve mysteries. Uh, I gotta get out of here. I said, let me, I, I want to watch it at the recital. You know what, I, I don't want to watch the recital. I'd rather wait for the recital and be surprised with what you do. Uh, you never want to do that, people. Uh, never want to be surprised. You always want to know what's going on. First off, you ever notice that they put all the parents in the front row so that all the kids can see 
their parents and it gives them encouragement and it lets them, right. But you ever see the parents when we walk in, we look scared to death. We act like we go into the firing squad. We like, uh, uh you, you wanna go? No, uh, all right, uh, and we ask each other, uh, is your kid retarded? My kid is retarded. Your kid is retarded? My kid is retarded. One lady said, my son isn't retarded. So I asked, what instrument does your son play? She said, my son plays the triangle. You don't, you don't play no triangle. There's no notes for no triangle, right? You just wait to get pointed at and then you go, bing, 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 bing. I said, love, your, your son is really retarded. Your, your son is the one with the helmet at the top with, with the dry macaroni and the glitter. That's, that's your son drooling over everybody else. Your son is really retarded. So the recital happens, and we hear and then my daughter and then you hear and you hear people in the audience going, is he retarded? The people in the audience, I think he's retarded. He is retarded. That's why he has the helmet on. Then all of a sudden, the band the conductor stops. He stops everybody. My daughter has a solo. Nobody told me about the solo. He gonna conduct everybody, stop, he go. And everybody goes, hmm. <laughs> Bing. <laughs> Bing. <laughs> Bing. <laughs> and the person, is, he is retarded. <laughs> everybody stop. All the lights go out. Spotlight, bow, right on my daughter. You hear the people in the audience going, she's got a solo. She's got a solo. She must be good. She got a solo. She's good. She's got a solo. My daughter stood up, looked everybody in the face, and wiped her lip like she played with Miles Davis in the previous life. And everybody was quiet. My daughter started playing, and this is what we heard. <laughs> And these same people said, I think she retarded too. Where's her helmet? And I'm in the front row. My daughter started waving. Hi, daddy. I said, hey. And I told everybody, that's not my real daughter. Uh, I'm just having sex with her mama. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's my daughter. I, w I went to Maury and found out they mine. They mine. Ladies are very smart. You know why ladies are smart? Ladies, you, you know how to read. And um, no, you read for entertainment. Like guys, that's not entertainment for guys. Reading, we, let me tell you what's entertaining for guys. Guys will watch another guy park a car and instruct him from the curb. How many fellas ever did this? Come on, back it up. Cut it. Bring it in. Brett, no, cut it now. Bring it in. No, no, do it again. You messed up. Where you get your license from? Start over. Cut it. <laughs> Okay, where was I at? Um, I'm retarded. I'm just fully retarded. Uh, so ladies enjoy reading. Let, let me tell you how I know girls are better readers. Remember in elementary school, the teacher used to always start grades, uh, class, off, class reading with a female. Remember that? In my class, it was Sarah. And Sarah made us look like a fool every, every day. Witch. <laughs> teacher goes, Sarah, class reading. Start us off, please. Sarah, get up, and she reads so eloquently. The President of the United States of America, together with Congress, asked the people, do we want change? The people replied, yes. Change was made. Teacher said, very good, Sarah. JP, pick up where we left off. I'm so dumb, I'm in the wrong book. Four plus seven is 12. No, and no, it's not 12, neither. What's wrong with you? And he goes, Sarah, we in history, shut up. That's why your mother and father is the same person. JP, next, next paragraph, okay. Tell Sarah to be quiet. And I, and that first word, that first word used to kill me, people. You know, that, oh, that first word. To he, 
to he. Yeah, if y'all ain't laughing, you just as retarded as I am. <laughs> There's somebody in here right now like, what's wrong with to he? That's a, that's a, that's a good word. I, I've used that word many a times. He goes, Sarah, that's the. Shut up. That's why your father ain't your real father. <laughs> Teacher go, JP, go ahead. Next word. Pray, hey, sorry, day, day, Pray, hey, sorry, day, day, Pray, hey, sorry, day, day, day. And then he go to teach it. Sound it out so we can help you. Ugh. Here's where you sound retarded in front of the whole class. Pray, hey, say, dentate. You ever say it like you know it? Pray, hey, say, dentate. And he goes, Sarah, that's the president. Mind your business. Teacher go, that's the last time, JP. Go head down to that other class. You know that other class. Oh, you know, they got four students and nine teachers. And they let you out at 2.30 because the rest of the school is embarrassed to see you. They give you 12 o'clock nap. You got graham crackers and grapefruit juice. You ate, they let you come out and you ever, I'm going to hell. But listen, you have, all right, listen. Let me stop. Uh, I got a lot more stuff to tell y'all. Uh, your stomach hurt? That mean I won, baby. That mean I won, God damn it. When your stomach hurt, I won. Ah, ah, ah. Um, I'm 46 years old. I'm 46 years old, uh, and I like to say that because we're about all the same age. When I look through, some of us are younger, but I, but 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 on the whole, on the whole, we're around the same age. Uh, I'm I'm uh, 46 ain't old. By all means, it's not old. It's older, older, and I have to admit that I'm older. Uh, anybody here in their 20s? Clap if you're 20. Yeah. Okay, those are the retarded people right there, see? If you're in your 20s, you, you're retarded, and you don't even know why. Ah! You tell them to clap, they made a noise. Ah! <laughs> why did you make a noise? I said, just clap. Because ah! you're 20. Um, I'm, old, I'm older than 20, and I have to realize I can't do tw things 20 year olds do. Uh, the other day, I tried to have a bowl of cereal with my kids. Uh, I had a bowl of Captain Crunchberries. Yeah. That, that is not a 40 year old cereal. I thought I pulled out a bowl of rocks and razor blades. This, this joint broke my teeth, cut my gums. I had to get stitches in my mouth. I was like, oh, where is the oatmeal? I found out I'm way past lactose intolerant. I'm lactose ignorant. Like I can't read milk. I'll poop all over myself. Milk. I found out the hard way. I took my kids to the ice cream truck. You ever, you ever take a lick of the ice cream? You know, you want to tell your kids, let me see if this is real ice cream. And I took the lid, I said, yeah. And the guy in the truck said, you want, you want sprinkles? I said, sprinkles? I said, this ain't chocolate, this is boo-boo, goddammit. <laughs> but I remember when I was young, fellas, remember you was in your 20s and you was on a date and you ain't want your woman to know that you had to fart? How many fellas remember you would take her out and you would squeeze your, how many fellas remember you would squeeze your butt this tight like this and you hold that fart for five to six hours? You ever did that, fellas? You held it for the whole date, and you couldn't wait for the date to be over. As soon as the date was over, you let it out. You ever fought so good, a tear run down your eye? You ever fought one of your knees loose? Ah! Not now, I can't hold a fart for five minutes. My nose start bleeding. But I'm married now. And when you're married, the best place to fart, fellas, is where? Where's the best place to fart, fellas? The bathroom. Your woman trained you well, brother. Look, she like this, and that's right, and that's exactly where he's supposed to fart. Where's the best place to fart, brother? Huh? In the bedroom. That's where it's at. In the bed. You fart in the bed, under the covers. And, and yeah, look at the ladies. It's like, uh, look at, look at that whole table. Uh, uh. Why would you do that? Uh, uh. That's disgusting. Uh. Ladies, you want to know why men fart under the covers? Because y'all don't know how to, um, shut up. Don't nobody want to talk to you late night. You, don't, you know, we don't mind. But ladies, let me tell you this. Your man gives you two breaths of sigh to let you know he about ready to go to sleep. That first sigh is when he first walk in the room. Fellas, you know this sigh. As soon as you sit down on the bed, you do this. <sighs> and you do a recap. Okay, everything is good. I locked the door. The kids is fed. 
Dog is in the house. Lights is out. Here go the second side, ladies. When we lay down and we put them covers, how many fellas snatch the covers and you, you tuck the covers right here and then you'd hear this. <sighs> and then here you go. Can I ask you a question? And you, we can't say no. We can't say no. But you got to hear our response, lady. This is when you hear us go, what? <laughs> See, we wouldn't mind if it was a light question. How was your day? Fine. Leave me alone. But you want to ask that serious question. How do you feel about the third world kids that don't have food? <laughs> and there's no water in Detroit. How do you, how do you feel about the, the icebergs that's coming down and the polar bear has nowhere to live? And we, we be in the bed like, what the what are you talking about? And, and you can't say, shut up. You can't say that because she'll cut you. You ain't even know she had a knife in the bed. All women got a knife. <laughs> so, so in the back of your mind, your mom be like, fine. Fine. But you, gotta, you, can't, you can't go, you can't do that. Oh, hell no. You'll be on Judge Judy tomorrow. So listen, this is when you take a page out the gay man book. How many fellas, yeah, how many fellas been in bed and you fought it like this? The one that run down your pajamas and make your leg warm. <laughs> you said, yeah, you said that ought to do it. <laughs> you don't even take the covers off. You leave the covers on and let it marinate and let it stick to her pajamas and stuff like that. And while she talking, she'll take the covers off. You know, I just want you to understand that. <laughs> and you can hear the monster go. It's like, God. I'm like, whatever, the big TV downstairs. Uh, told you I was going to have fun with y'all. Um, any questions? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is JP Justice. Good night. Did you do a good job, ladies and gentlemen? Do a good job. Well, make them hear it, y'all. Give me a big round of applause to JP. Closing out. The second season of Lapaholics Live. My name is Ray DeJohn. On behalf of all the comedians tonight, we thank you for coming out and supporting the show. Hopefully you'll support us again. We'll see y'all next time. Thank you very much, y'all. Appreciate it. <laughs>